I'm a pretty simple, simple guy. Because then once we have these walls, we'll have our little safe little space. The reason why I didn't I don't make them too large because then it, I was worried that maybe people might feel a little claustrophobic about it. So if you put too too much of a wall there. Let's see one, two, three, four. Let's move this up. Boom, perfect. And then we'll just create the wall. We're gonna extend it, and you get your yourself a little area. And then we're gonna hop in game. I want I want you to see what that looks like. Slide that over. Nice. It's like I'm creating a little pen for myself. But I, I like that you, you can always change the terrain later, but I really I work well with grids. It's probably my my editing experience and what I feel comfortable with. And then boom. So if you hit play, your character is where you're going to spawn in under. See, and now I have these little walls, and I'm going to put some targets in front of me here, which are going to do both the flicking and the tracking scenarios. Right now, you hear a pistol. I have the pistol that I'm shooting with. When you go to the editor, you can change the various guns. We're going to do the tracking scenario first, because I think that's a lot easier to, to put together. But if you go here, you can change the various weapons, and you have custom weapons here. You can even add your custom recoils if you want. We're going to do lightning gun. Lightning gun is really good for tracking. You can do the length of time for the task, the light intensity. But in this scenario, we're just gonna so we're gonna keep it very straightforward. We get the walls up, very very easy, right? So now we're gonna make it even easier. We're gonna just draw a drag in over a sp pointer spawner. This is gonna be who's gonna be tracking in front of us. I'm gonna put it like right here, and you can load. Look at all these bots that the community have put together. And I've seen a lot of them like Pasu. But if you want to create your own, you can definitely do that, which is what we're going to do now. And there's also SmartBot, which we'll get into in just a moment as well. There's SmartBot there, which is also really good to kind of get you, kind of make it a lot easier. So if we did, I want to do Capsule, really like Capsule. We're going to do it so that it strafes in front of us. Then we're going to change this to where... It's advanced, but SmartBot overrides Jump. It does it? it, it, it it takes things to another level. It makes your life a lot easier because it adds variety. Um, let's, for, for simplicity's sake, just so you kind of get the breakdown, let's remove SmartBot real quick, and we'll bring it back in. Don't worry. Bring this, click on this again. Let's hit new. Uh, we'll do capsule. Just want you to understand and kind of get the bare basics of it. You can change its speed and direction. This is kind of good for like thin gauntlet where it's a very popular scenario across all game trainers where you want to hit a really small target, you can change the speed. This changes its overall speed. So let's say I want to do 3.6, right? Let's say I want to add a lot of hit points to this. I'm going to add 300 hit points. Now what I want to do is on death, I want it to respawn. And let's give it a name. We're going to call it Daz Tracking Bot. Hit save. We're not done yet, but I want you to see it in-game real quick. Okay. See, it's a big boy. And it moves. You might need to adjust your volume, which is okay. I know I just turned it up for a moment. I'm going to turn it down another way. So you have the bot where it moves left and right, left and right, and... Sh and strafes and you can change his waypoints and moves to different locations and we're going to talk about waypoints here when we do the flick scenario you know let's do something a little more interesting with it make it even more let's say you're trying to really hone in on your mouse control right really get that in so let's click on the bot one more time and we're going to change its size we're going to change let's do scalar Let's do the height. We're going to make it a little taller. We're going to change its width so it's really thin. So when you see it go to an angle, I'm going to do point 0.3. In depth, I'm going to do point 0.3. And make it really small. So when I hit save, let's go hop in. So we're going to make it a really skinny one so it really hones in on that mouse control so you're making smaller movements, right? 
Might have made it a little too tall. It's okay. I can make it thinner. But notice how you can change the spot. Which makes it a lot harder to track, right? I mean, you really start to have to hone in on that muscle control. And you can, you can change the speed of this as you're kind of building out a tracking scenario. Because Thin Gauntlet is so... It's so good. You can change the shape, and you, as you saw with the bots. Let's bring this back up. I would like to add and let's move that around. You can bring it a little closer if you like. You can kind of move this around. Let us do, excuse me, a. Let's do load dash tracking bot add modifier. There we go. I want to change. Let's just keep it at a height of one see how thin we can get it and I'm gonna change its speed so it feels a lot more manageable so it's not overwhelming I'm gonna change it to let's say one to two let's try that really get used to that small refined movement as you go back and forth you can speed this up too you can keep speeding this up and changing it up yeah there we go that's a nice thin target that's not how bad if you're really trying to work on like your mouse control in the center of this wow this is actually a really good one I really like this one this kind of reminds me of Thin Gauntlet. You can keep changing it, adding different bots. But this is a nice, simple tracking scenario. I think some of them have existed as Thin Gauntlet. Like, it's just hitting a really, really small target. I probably even need to go even slower on this. But this is a really good one. You realize how much you move your hand with, with your mouse control and trying to hit something this small and then track it. There you go. Okay, my hand kind of... I'm over here trying to flick way too much, but this is why we create scenarios. We realize how little you need to move to go back and forth. It, it's probably a little sharp on its on its edges, which you can also change if you want to change its distance and how sharp it cuts the corner. Let's go to this. Direction speed. So let's say it switches around. Let's do 50. And there's so much you can do here. There's so many objects. You can even put an object so it keeps like peaking if you'd like. So it like peaks around a corner. This is, this is why I recommended those bots. We can put them into, and we're kind of getting down to the very basics, where you can put it in Valheim, or you can put it in Bind. And there you go. So it's a lot, the direction is a lot slower, right? You can speed this up so that then you, the reaction time needed is not as dramatic. And if you like, you can even change this to where it's more of a click time scenario, which is why you have the custom weapons, which are really, really good. Like even there, custom weapons which are really, really good. Like, even there, that was that was a pretty good solid scenario. Like, I, I mean, that's something I would actually, I could see myself practicing on. And you can kind of get a lot more granular, a lot more unique with it. You can change this to, let's say, I don't know, a revolver, a pistol, or a deagle. You know, you can even just kind of go from the basic one. You can change the length of time. So maybe it's like three minutes you have to do it if you just want like an intense one. So you can change that. And you can, you know, render what you see so then you have the map. I call this tracking scenarios. You can change the elevation if you like. There's a there's so much you can do here, but try not to get overwhelmed. Notice how simple we kept it with just a bot, right? And now we're gonna add in a flick scenario, one where you're just gonna flick to two two different targets. You can put these in different areas too. I know one would be trying to work on your 180 spin, and let's try let's try to do that. Let's do a flicking on a 180. Let's say you're playing like Apex Legends or Quake, and you're having to constantly worry about flicking to a 180, which is probably not as good as like CS experience but maybe good for other video games so let's let's delete this bot and we're gonna add in waypoint spawner because we're gonna add in two different scenarios here we're gonna add in we're gonna put them within like in front of us here right let me do new I'm gonna add in headshot let's do smart bot in a bot here let's do headshot like I mentioned let's do flicking flicking 180 180 let's do a nice 180 one I know I was setting one up earlier for fun and I deleted all of them just because I wanted to start fresh death on respawn let's see what type of scenario do we want for this hmm which one do we want to do let's do let's do jumping had, had a little bit 180 and jumping that that sounds like that sounds like a nightmare so you have one hp on this right we're going to have it spawn at the start and you can add in so so we're going to hit save on this we're going to call it flick 180 we're going to have random available waypoints we're going to add some waypoints onto this so it gets set up 
we're going to skip the last spawn on random. And then we're going to add some waypoints where we want it to spawn right in front of us. We're going to put the size. We're going to change the size to 2. And then we're going to add both these waypoints in. So how do we add those waypoints? Well, we're going to add the waypoints under waypoints. So we're going to add one of them right here. Boom. Easy. Done. And we're going to add another waypoint in the back. So we're going to have a nice flick 180. I just came up with that because I, I, I was just thinking about, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of these. And then one that's kind of like jumping kind of throws you off a bit. So you click on this again. And remember, we had the modifier here, so we're going to add waypoint one. And I might need to adjust this again to get it just right. Right. Let's see what that looks like. Might need to adjust this. See how this is a nice 180? This is good for my sensitivity to kind of practice. I probably should get get them to move, but this is actually pretty good. It's just doing a nice 180 flick. You can change it. You can actually change this, so so you don't have to wait for it. So we're gonna change the scenario so then when they spawn, there is no downtime on it. Delayed start, start on spawn, flick 180. Let's see here. I guess they're good. And well, let's let's add a little bit more variety to it. We can have them move around a little bit if we'd like. Let's see here. Let's exit out of this. I guess we do have it. Not delayed at start. We can change the bot though. So let's uh Oh, didn't mean to move that. Let's go to the settings here. Let's have it move for a little bit. You can have it move forward, backwards, kind of adjust, kind of do a little bit more of unique things here. Vertical time on max to three. Let's not. Let's add. There we go. There's the delay. We don't want any delay on this. Let me hit save and let me show you this now. And then we can add a little bit of a jump and add a little bit more versatility to it. And you can keep moving them in different areas, so it just kind of throws you off. Have it spawning behind me first. See how it's immediately jumping and you have to flick. I might actually save this one. This is not half bad. Especially because I'm on, like I mentioned at the start of this that I'm on a lower sensitivity and I apologize if you can hear my mouse but as I throw my arm across it. This really gets you. You know, this is really good for Apex. Everyone always asks the question, how do you get used to your sensitivity? Well, doing a nice 180 and seeing if it's too slow, if you have enough mouse pad, this is a really good test and setting this up. I actually, I might do a video on this. I might actually do a guide and say, how do you understand your full inches per 360? You can change this so they bounce higher, so they don't bounce as high. So they can, even you can create waypoints and where they go to and get really complex. You could say, I want it to go here, here, and like I want it to move at mock speed and like scare me as it's just jumping around. You can you can have some fun with this and really, really play with it and create more waypoints, change the position, change the scaling, and just, you know, essentially have at it. Because there's a lot you can do with the bot. So if we come back, we can say it starts at three, let's say shoots up in the air, really get your sensitivity going. Let's just say it just skyrockets over to the moon. To the moon. Interval time to where it jumps. Let's say this is point 0.1. You can just change these, and, and it really starts to spice up the scenario and really changes things for you. Let's go back in. So just remember, when you make changes within the Creator Studio so it doesn't get overwhelming, try to make small changes and work your way up. Don't try to be too ambitious at the start. Like, as we start to do this, you can put these on platforms. You can create a little platform, you know, have a little more fun. Realize, look at that. Look at that guy. He's flying up in the air. My man is going to the moon, just like the stocks. It's a really good scenario for as I'm throwing my arm across because I don't have the fastest sensitivity. Ooh, man, they really fly. I think I put it too high, but, you know, this is why you have these settings to really kind of change it up and throw you off. But this is a, this is, this is a fun scenario. This is good. And it, it, remember, you can change the, the sky, too. So let's say the blue really bothers you. You can change the sky. You can change the terrain. You can add objects. We can add a little... We'll have a little fun here. I'm going to add some other little... 
little things in the way. You can add a shape. Maybe put a cube, maybe put a cylinder, you know, decorate. At this point, once you create your scenario, you can start to decorate. It's like playing The Sims. You can put maybe staircases where you want the bot to, to spawn. And there's a is stick, so it can be sticky. You can change these so that it's higher up, so this starts at a, at a higher point, if you like. You can make this bigger. You can scale it. I'm going to move these things around and make it a lot more complex. But like I said, this is where you start to have your fun, right? This is where you get to to really experiment. Yeah, let's see, let's move this on top of here. I need to make this a lot wider though. Let's move around the camera. There we go. Got a got a thick nice thick little staircase. Let's put that on the ground there. Let's bring the white point I'm so used to playing like games like Roller T Coaster Tycoon and moving these things around. It can be a little. You can do smart uh, where, it, where it moves it specifically. So then, if you're wondering where this will spawn, let's see here. Let's go up. I'm doing it more the archaic way. So just don't mind me. And then we move it right there. And there's a sticky where you can make it sticky, make it smart on objects. You can mess with that but as you get better at this you start to improve this is kind of the bare bones version of it so I hit play let me hop in there you're gonna see those staircases over now now to the right you can change the color of them really organize this really make this yours make this your scenario what you need to work on so I'm gonna flick Ooh, flew over there there he's over there this is like a quake scenario man as you're flicking between various targets you can you don't have to make it shoot up to the sky either like I mentioned you can change its its projectile and how much it's going up in the air it's its projectile and how much it's going up in the air and you can even do them individually if you like let's say I only wanted to bounce just a little bit make it more of a, a micro scenario let's say we really wanted to fo work on a, a nice broad movement make this an interesting mini flick you get go for a long flick then mini flick and like really start to test out those those arms you know what i mean and then go right into a small movement that's probably one that i would personally want to work on hit save hit play go right back in it recommend saving your work and let's hop into it here see how it's little i might need to do it a little bit higher actually but you see you see what i mean if you can get it just a little bit higher up there so then there's a little bit more oomph to it you could even change where hit points change and everything you get really granular with it right now i figured i kind of keep it a little bare bones but you do have that option available for you Let's, i just want to get the boss just right now now that i'm kind of in it now i'm addicted to it now i want to see it just kind of done at the end of the day let's do one to two point three and just throw a random interval there really throw ourselves off and we hit play And then we're going to go right into it. And remember, you can put these bots. So if you think you can copy, bind. There you go. See how they're bouncing a little bit? Go from a broad movement to a micro one. Because sometimes you... Like, let's say you have issues with... Because AimLab is really good about telling you where your weak spot is, whether it's on the left or the right. Let's say you want to focus specifically on the left and right movement. This would be one of the, like with a broader stroke. Or let's say it's a micro movement. You move them right next to each other. You go boom, boom, boom. Or you add like ten different bots. Where it goes here, here, here. And you want to randomize it and change it. You can definitely do that. And hopefully by showcasing this and enjoying going back and forth between various targets, you see just how not overwhelming it is. I know I kind of started off maybe overwhelming with just putting walls, like <laughs> the time to make something pretty to put yourself in a little box. And then I know that they showcase memes like you want to throw a giraffe in there. Let's throw a giraffe. Let me see if I can throw a giraffe in here. Do they have those? I know there's the stationary. Let's put a giraffe because it's cute. Buildings and structure. Oh, decorative. There we go. Let's do village. Let's do nature. City animals. You can put a cat in here. That's crazy. I know the giraffe. I like the giraffe. I'm looking for the giraffe. Jungle animals. There it is. There's a giraffe. And there you go. You got yourself a little giraffe. Let's make it a big giraffe. 
just for the memes right before we, we wrap up here make a long giraffe make a chunky one well, let's let's add two giraffe we're gonna make a chunky one and then we're gonna make a, a long boy one there we go you hop in game you can move around I, I i i so much prefer staying stationary that's a personal preference whenever i'm aiming <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You have such two dr dramatic versions. You have such a long. You got long boy and you got a short boy. You have both of them there, and they're yours forever. You can shoot them, but it won't do anything. Just drop your accuracy. And there you have it. So we've covered for the past. We covered quite a bit today. We discussed. We were reviewing some of the maps. Remember, you can change the maps and add. Your, let's say you wanted to add a giraffe onto Valhaven, if you like. Now we discussed buy. We discussed the Rainbow Six Siege map, Valhaven. You talked about the custom weapons, which we discussed briefly. You know, you have a lot of weapons. You can change. You can even create your own recoil, if you like, with various weapons that you make, and they'll all show up here. You know, you have the scar, lightning gun, orb. You know, pulse rifles, anything. Anything and everything in this here. I mean, there's so much customization. It may, some of it may take a little longer, but in the long run, I mean, it's yours. And it, 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 aim lab becomes more of your tool, right? Now we kind of discussed briefly smart bots and what it can do. Uh, just kind of cover it a little bit more high level. And you can add the textures here. So we click on this and we go to the bot. And let's say we were to add another one back in. The SmartBot is there to kind of add some intervals, to kind of do a little bit more than just having to constantly program everything. But of course, even on the list, as you look at the various bots, and let's bring another one of these in. Let's go to Point Spawner. I'm going to start a bot here. Let's go to New. SmartBot, check that off. Let's say you want to do, let's do Humanoid. Smartbot overrides 8080 dodge jump orbit. You know it, it'll it'll do some things for you. It's very advanced, and there's so much here. Look at this. There's so much here that it can do for you. So you don't have to always just. So it just doesn't feel so cookie cutter. The Smartbot does add so much versatility to it. So definitely check that out, especially with the 8080 one. I think that one's probably the coolest. That one makes a whole lot of sense. But that one is here, and it's where you see when you type in new. Let's actually go to load. And I know you see the community has created a lot of these. Does two straight bot, HQ bot, HUD smooth, strafe apex sphere. So if you're into the apex legends, like we we're talking about a tracking scenario. I know I did one that was kind of bare where you're looking for like more thin gauntlet, which is in my opinion, the most famous of like improving tracking. But you know, if you're into apex like I am, then you have that bot there. We discussed the five tracking scenarios within siege which were Siege Entry, Siege C4 Arc, Siege Capacity. We had Siege Detection Shot, Siege Audio Spatial 45. And then, of course, we discussed the new tracking scenarios that are really beneficial to help you out, which is Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, and the Reactive Track. All there available for you as well. We just reviewed some of the crosshair settings, and then we built a flicking scenario and a tracking scenario. So we really did a lot here. And then we ended up here at the very end where we have this gigantic long giraffe. So we'll say goodbye to George here. We thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a whole lot. Hopefully we were able to give a lot of tips, a lot of advice as you watched. And we're able to provide a lot of context of things. We really look forward. Don't be intimidated if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Just go and have some fun. Learn a whole lot about AimLab. It's free. Can't really beat free when you can add a free giraffe named George. We appreciate you guys for watching. We look forward to seeing you guys all next time. Hello and welcome to Aim Lab. Today we're going to cover quite a bit. If you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, advanced, we welcome you because today we're going to review some of the Creator Studios features such as various maps such as Bind or Valhaven. We're going to discuss the custom weapons in the Creator Studio, some of the smart bots. We're going to enjoy a lot of the tasks. We're going to go through them together. We're going to talk about the pros and cons, what you can learn. We're going to review some of the crosshair outlines. We're going to build a flicking task within the Creator Studio, or we're even going to build a tracking task. And don't worry, why all of this is going to feel very overwhelming at first. We're going to take it slow. We're going to enjoy the journey together. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced user, because today we're going to break down everything with an aim lab that I discussed and make sure that this takes you on a healthy journey as you look to improve your aim. Now remember some of the biggest things, let's go ahead and add a few of these scenarios. We're going to start with some of the fun stuff first. We're going to start with the scenarios. 
Remember that even if you go to a gym, I'm going to relate this heavily towards being and working out in a gym, maybe you're one of the fastest runners in the world. Maybe perhaps you can lift the most. A lot of these scenarios you will find perhaps you are one of the fastest runners. Maybe you're just one of the fastest at flicking. But maybe you don't have the speed to really back it up. Maybe you, you need to work on that. Maybe to work on your precision. Maybe you need to work. Overall, your goal is to improve your mouse control. And the plus side, even with Aim Lab, is that you can utilize controller functionality. So let's start with some of these scenarios. Let's go with Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, as well as Reactive Track. So I have all these. We're going to cover every single one of them and go really in depth. And we're going to do this without doing multiple takes. You're going to see just raw aim and everything that we're going to discuss with it. Let's start start with Sphere Track 90. I really enjoy a lot of these new scenarios, and I've put a lot of time into them so far. They're a whole lot of fun and enjoyable. Remember, even with your settings, as you hop into Aim Lab, as you can tell, you can go to your options and change your crosshair that we mentioned before. You can change the opacity so you get more of a little bit of an outline there. You can change the length of it. You can make it a little smaller. Kind of like what you see on Valorant or CSGO. You can change the th thickness if you like. Right now we kind of have that little bit of a healthy medium in the crosshair. I'm going to save that. If we go back to the screen here, just know that you have a lot of functionality at your disposal. So in this first scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just start tracking, and then we're going to break down everything that we saw here. I'll do my best to kind of talk throughout some of the scenarios. Some of them we'll just kind of let run, we'll see what mistakes we make. And then we'll break down everything. As we continue onwards, we'll break down the specific scenario first and kind of talk in depth. I really wanted to get us first right into the nitty-gritty of Aim Lab because there's so much here to break down. Scenarios will last a predetermined amount of time, so this is your first time on Aim Lab. You can see here as we're tracking something within our 90 degree peripheral. You don't have to hold mouse one, all you're going to do is simply track. And sometimes you'll have better days than others, and even while talking is a great exercise. As we're talking now, talking can be very important, especially when you're calming in a video game. So maybe you might have a friend next to you where you can have some calming and communication. So right there we got top placement, which is not half bad considering we were talking through it. Uh, we can definitely work to improve and everything that we're doing. Because talking can definitely make it a lot more of a struggle and you'll continue to get better and better as you do this. So what you saw there was Sphere Track 90 Ultimate, which is perfect for scenarios where you're tracking individuals right in front of you. Maybe it's like Apex Legends, Quake, or various games where the target seems to be floating, whether it's Horizon popping your Q, maybe you're in Quake and you're, you know, doing your rocket jumps and kind of bouncing around. Sphere Track 90 Ultimate is going to be a fantastic scenario to getting you comfortable within the 90 degree surface right in front of you. This may be something that you might not be useful. Let's say if you're playing CSGO or perhaps if you're playing Rainbow Six Siege, you may not be used to that full range of motion, specifically where targets, you've been very much taught in CSGO or Rainbow Six Siege, that you do not need to move above head level. Well, in certain games, you might need to expand upon that. Sphere Track 90 will get used to those that muscle control, and even as we saw there, we got used to it. I put mine on practice quite a bit. I don't log a ton of my scores. So this, while this says third play of this task, if you don't, if you feel really nervous about getting on the leaderboard, you probably saw it before. But don't be shy. You can always click on it and avoid putting this task on the leaderboard. And of course, maybe there's scenarios that you may play less. I know there's quite a few that'll play less, but I one of them that's coming up is one of my favorites. I think I have over 50 attempts on that I really, really enjoy specifically just because it really hones in on my aim. So let's go to the next task here. Arc track is a fantastic scenario where individual players in front of you will arc. And this is really, really helpful to improving and stabilize your aim because most targets are not going to just hover left and right strafes. And let's just go ahead and showcase that for all of you guys here. So what you want to do is work to keep your hand as stable as possible. And if you have any sort of jittering, all it means is perhaps you're not warmed up. And it's why you do the scenario.
you'll have moments of brilliance as you're tracking. As you're really kind of hitting your groove. And you'll have moments where you may not be as on point. Not a bad run. We look at the breakdown on the leaderboards. If I put in just a little bit of time, it would easily break a top 100 score on this. Not one I definitely focus on. It, now that I play it, <laughs> I kind of feel like I might need to put a little more time and effort into this one compared to the micro track one. Let's do that one. I know that one I have an easy top 100 on, but arc track is very beneficial towards your aim to helping smooth out the arc that you have with your, with your aim. So it's not just left and right, up and down, but realizing that individual characters or players when they're jumping in front of you do have an arc to their overall movement. So let's go on into the next task here. Start track is fantastic for getting used to a nice stable movement bouncing left and right. You'll see the points bounce left and right. This is a really fun one. I really enjoy this scenario. This is great for beginners when you're trying to create mouse stability from various areas. Not a bad run, so tips and advice as you're working on this. And again, that was almost a top 100 score right there even. Another one I really enjoy. I know I've broken a top 100 before. I think I was probably did under practice. One of the biggest things here, I'm actually utilizing a new sensitivity. Don't be afraid to practice and utilize a new sensitivity if you need it. It can be extremely beneficial to utilize a new sensitivity and realize, okay, maybe I need to go a little faster and go a little slower. In today's exercise, I'm utilizing a new one, which my sensitivity is 15.5 inches per 360 compared to where I was at. I think it was 13.42 so. But what I like about this sensitivity is that, as you can tell, it provides a lot of smoothness to my aim. I just need to kind of work on the overall larger movements. And exercise is very important. That's actually a little case study that I have been doing, especially with these scenarios. Make sure you focus on clearing your mind having positive mental health when you come into practice, just very much as when you would work out and train. It's time to kind of get your body run into shape. So you want to be in the right mental mindset, and you also want to make sure that you're keeping your body in tip-top shape. Because while this is a, a video game, it all also stresses your mind, it stresses your body, and you have to make sure that you're taking very much care of what you're doing. So let's do the next scenario here. This one is Micro Start Track, one of my favorites. I really enjoy this scenario. micro movements and before it starts let's discuss it this is great for controlling recoil making sure you understand the small movements from bouncing back and forth it just gets you used to micro adjustments and it's a very vital scenario that was not here it's one of the newer ones but i have found that it's really great for apex legends controlling recoil and getting used and smoothing out your aim and realizing how much or little that you need to move so let's go ahead and start the scenario
pretty good run. Let's see where we sat on the leaderboard before. So we were a little bit shy of our prior score, but when you look at the leaderboard, it's important to look. So this is going to be an exercise if you look. What did we do before? We had 83% on screen tracking, so we're about 3% off from the normal tracking, which isn't bad. So utilize some of your scores and some of your prior history and even look on the leaderboards to see how people are doing with their time on and time off. So if I look in the average time on and time off, I'll see where, where I excelled and maybe where I didn't excel as much. This is a really fun scenario and then you can even go to insights and see where your strengths and weaknesses are, which is very beneficial. What I have done for today, and this is another tip when we go into the next scenario here, I actually have changed my FOV I know most people would kind of go into this trying to put their best settings, but I really kind of wanted this to feel very raw, just so you understood that not everyone's perfect, and of course everything you're working on is towards a common goal. I actually set this to my normal Apex FOV, which is at 110 field of view, and graphic settings I set, set to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So let's say you are a professional or working to become a professional CSGO player, or let's say you play at a different aspect ratio, you can change that so then you feel a lot more comfortable. Now, if you are having difficulty tracking, you can change the FOV to get much closer so you can see the target so you're not as far away. Or perhaps you're having maybe issues understanding the scaling and the flick distance, you can change the field of view so you get a different perspective and angle. This is positives to do just to kind of get you perspective. Remember that field of view is all about just changing your lens. If you compare it to, let's say, a camera, if you're using a camera lens and you zoom in with it, well, that changes the field of view and you zoom out with it. The camera isn't changing. It still requires the same distance, but it's definitely a very helpful trick. So in this one that we're about to do, I might hit reset here so we can take a look at it. This one is a reactive one. I, I really like the scenario for, for reactive. I'm going to restart it so we can talk about it a little bit more in depth as well. The reactive one is really beneficial in terms of making sure that you're flicking to right back onto the target. It's, it's a rather large target, as you saw there, but that's not a bad thing because really the focus is to make sure that you're flicking back and forth and reacting appropriately. This one will definitely vary depending on the time of day and make sure that you exercise, eating. Now what's interesting is that you'll have more success with a faster sensitivity. And the reason why I'm logging most of my scores, usually to take the edge off, like I mentioned, you can set it to practice if you like, so you don't feel the pressure of like, oh, I'm logging on the leaderboard. I know that can be a little intimidating for some, but once you see on the leaderboard, okay, you got yourself a high score, you can take a look and compare yourself to how you're doing with others. And you know, not an overall bad performance just for doing these all back to back. I would say how much time you need to spend on these scenarios would vary depending on your overall goals. It's kind of like when you're working out at a gym, right? You need to compare and ask yourself, how much time do I need to spend to really achieve the results I'm looking for? I always recommend somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Each of these scenarios takes about a minute apiece. So we have five here. These are the new tracking scenarios. And just kind of recap the ones that we've already looked at. You're, you're looking at Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, and Reactive Track. So we got a lot here. And these are all one minute a piece. And if you did them all three, you know, a total of three times, and that would equate to a total of 15 minutes. And at that point, when you hop in game, you should feel quite warm up, warmed up and pretty positive as you hopped into your games. And that's really the whole point. And when you start to kind of work on certain movements. So if we look at these scenarios and we were to ask ourselves, which one did I struggle with? I almost want to say arc track was probably the one I struggled with the most. Micro start track. I think if I had a good day, that seemed to be a scenario that I, that I started taking more seriously on the leaderboards just because I was really popping off with it. And then because I changed my sensitivity, start track, excuse me, start track, 
probably one that yeah overall that i would just need to to spend a lot more time just because it, it again why it's called star trek as you can tell kind of goes in a star shape and it's more linear I, I think overall that was probably my weakest scenario so kind of assess and really reflect and be be critical of yourself but not too harsh because you know that you're you're working to improve and that's the overall goal so what we're going to go through next are the rainbow six siege scenarios what's really great about aim lab which i really enjoy is the variety that you see in a lot of the scenarios it's not just grid shot i know grid shot is very very popular but you can see a lot of improvement from switching things up things you're not used to even if rainbow six siege is not your main game there is so much to learn in terms of accuracy and overall improvement so in this scenario that you're looking at this is where c4s get thrown at you periodically this will help on where C4s get thrown at you periodically. This will help on your precision and accuracy to help you improve your aim. Let's say you don't even play Rainbow Six Siege. There's a lot of applications for this, whether you're shooting something that may be running towards you or just trying to make sure that you're accurate. You don't want it to blow up in front of you. And that's the overall well, exercise and goal. So if you miss, it's perfectly fine. You get more points if you hit it while it's in the air. Just the goal is for it to not to blow up. You can move your character in-game if you like. In this case, I'm going to have him stay still until I don't need to. Just kind of hold the angle. But if you want to throw yourself off, you can kind of jiggle peek left and right. Again, don't be turned off if you don't play Rainbow Six Siege. Because flicking to various small targets of various shapes at various angles can be very beneficial to improving your aim. Even if Rainbow Six Siege isn't even my main game I, w I still actually thoroughly enjoy the scenario and definitely learned a lot from it I always notice that I seem to be better when the targets are moving right to left rather than left to right so excuse me when they're going left to right I seem to excel more but if they're going right to left I struggled a bit more that's just my own assessment and you can also see from insights where you struggle the most. If you were to do the scenario again, definitely work on continuing to improve, work on those flick shots, try to have it flick. And if you need to, then you can move your character in the scenario if you'd like. You don't need to, you don't have to, but it, you know, it's always there as an option for you if you'd like. And let's discuss what, and I'm going to switch to one of these that is really, really cool. We're starting to, starting to hit some of the weak points with my aim. You know, tracking, I, I kind of excel at and flicking from the Battlefield days and even Apex Legends where we've hit Masters. We relook at Siege Entry. This is a really interesting scenario because I don't have the most amount of CSGO experience. I spent thousands of hours in aim trainers. You know, sometimes let's say you don't have all the time in the world. Maybe that's why you're watching this video. Maybe that's why you're hopping into Aim Lab. It's perfectly fine. This is why we have these exercises and these utilities to help you improve. This is very popular. You've probably seen a lot of YouTube scenarios where somebody will breach a building and kind of work their way in. So while this is labeled as Rainbow Six Siege, this is this is such a cool scenario. I really, really like this one. I think it taught it taught me the most so far. Also, there's one about memory where I was definitely struggling with. But of course, you move, and they shoot back if you take a little bit too long. So cutting corners and slicing the pie is very important. You've probably seen that a lot in Valorant as you cut and you want to stop your movement and take your shot. And with this scenario, you want to keep moving as fast as possible. And as you continue to improve, you start to maximize on your movement and get faster and faster. And it's okay if you struggle a little bit. That's the whole point. There's only so many areas that an enemy can be. I, I understand this from Apex Legends, so if, you do, if you're not used to the overall map and you don't know where all the targets are, that's perfectly fine. And talking when you do scenarios, like I mentioned, is not always the easiest thing. Sometimes that's why you hear people so quiet. you got to watch your back in various angles. That's why I got hit here. So a good example of not knowing where enemies are. But remember, whenever you enter the room, there's only so many locations that they're going to be at. It's called slicing the pie, and this is such a great demonstration. In fact, it makes me it inspires me to make my own YouTube video on this specifically, just because it's so it's it's honestly a lot. Of, I can see myself popping in music and enjoying the scenario just endlessly. And you can hold shift to start to run a bit more. 
the goal is to keep and we're gonna do this one again as we get a little faster I breached incorrectly there so cutting cutting the angle and slicing the pie slicing the pie you know what I'm, I'm gonna do this scenario again with you guys and really talk through it so slicing the pie is whenever you cut an angle think of your think of your field of view like a pie like right in front of you if you can just imagine that for me and as you cut it think of this as like a like a pie and you keep going a little more degree a little more degree and you cut the pie and remember your hitbox when you go up and down is super small so as you keep moving through and this this incorporates everything that you've learned in terms of your overall aim and accuracy like you can understand the concept but as you keep doing it you need to learn and continue to get better and better and better so you know where enemies are at so if we breach again i'm going to restart the scenario and talk to this this is this is just so it's awesome that Aimline put this in. I think this is fantastic, and it really, really teaches. So if you, there's only so many areas that an enemy can be, and, and if you don't stand still, then you don't get the shot. So remember, if you know an enemy could be here, and you cut the angles, knowing where they're most likely going to be at, you start. To, it starts to rely less on aim and more on predicting an enemy and where they're going to be. Prediction is really key, and so let's restart this and let's just try to zip through this as quick as possible so you can see the whole thing. The goal is to keep running through the map as fast as possible, and these enemies are predetermined, but if you get so used to cutting the angles and going through various motions, you start to really speed up. Even as you see me going through this, because I know where the enemies are, you really start to speed up your overall aim and your overall accuracy, and of course they punish you and shoot you back if you take a little too long, which we did in that scenario so remember to keep peeking go through this as quick as possible and it's pretty straightforward where you need to go there's areas that I need to check. I need to get better about checking. Too much Apex Legends, everyone always around you. You need to play a lot smarter. But this is this is why we do this. This is this is literally why we do this. Where you're not looking at somebody who's perfect. Where I've had I have a lot of strengths, but I also have a lot of weaknesses, and that's perfectly fine. If I stood there actually in game, I definitely would have been dead. But we learn, right? We get better. You try to do this on a timer. I know CSGO has a ton of these back in the day. But I, what I like about the fact that it lives in Aim Lab is that you can change your sensitivity and it feels just a lot more universal. So the application makes a whole lot more sense. And then you're right back at the start. And you just kind of rush right through again. So this says a high score. I know I So this says a high score. I know I always put all these in. Let's see, what is the average score that we see on this? For Siege Entry. I don't think I was able to get this on the leaderboard. We can always continue to do better and keep rinsing and repeating. And if we did it one more time, I just kind of want to do it one more time for exercise sake. This is, this is such a good one. And when we go into the Creator Studio... This is going to be a good segue to everything that we talk about from the Creator Studio standpoint. It's kind of why I'm spending a little bit more time on it. And I feel like it's one of my weaknesses. So it, when I'm just kind of generally enjoying kind of going through this, this, this is where you find your passion and where you find things that you need to work on. Because you're keeping your crosshairs at head level as well as you're doing this, which is great. I don't know why this hall always trips me up as if there's going to be three there. It's okay if you're not perfect. Remember that as you're doing this. Even if you're super good, try to beat this score. Try to hop in. Try to do better. Try to be better. That's the overall goal. As long as you're motivated and hop in and you want to be better, then... I feel like I did inspire somebody today. I 
remember, enemies are always going to be in the strangest spots. Trust me, playing Apex Legends, people are always in the weirdest spots. But they start to become predictable over time. And that's part of the magic of things. If you start to kind of think outside the box of where enemies could or could not be, then you've done half of the work, right? And this applies to various games. So it, it, just think of this as opening your mind and thinking a little bit more broad on where enemies can place themselves. So we've, we've already done better. That's already better. Just imagine if we did this for another let's say 30 minutes, how much I would improve and how much this would translate in game. I'm, I'm probably, gonna, after I, I finish this this big video, I'm probably gonna spend the next couple hours on this. That was a whole lot of fun. I know that might seem lame, but pop in some music, enjoy yourself, find that point of zen and start to really grind these out. You can be one of the best aimers in the world. I've seen some people who are cracked out of their mind with some of the best aim in the world, but you, when they apply different things such as movement, such as memory, which is the next one, you're gonna see me really slip up. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be very interesting, but that's why we do these things. You know what? Let's let's go with something a little easier. Let's do the uh, audio version where you hear the the audio, spatial audio. This is really good at whenever you try to decipher where audio is. I'm going to give you a guide to this one. This one's going to be very beneficial to really help you out because there's two types of audio that you'll hear. When it sounds a little closer, it almost, it's two clicks away. So this one's really close on the right, close on the left. A little louder. Kind of slipped a little louder. There we go. Left. Okay, let's do this one again. I'm going to reset. You really got to turn your headphones up. I'm going to turn my headphones up because I had them a little low. It's kind of hard for me to decipher. In terms of headsets, what you want to do is have one that has enough bass. This is why some pros will use headphones so they kind of have the bass with it. I happen to be using a headset at the moment, but that's the reason why some pros will use headphones because it adds a bass so you can kind of hear the difference. The distance kind of helps in terms of bass and the treble, and it's a lot more dramatic. It's why when you utilize various peripherals, sometimes having a highlighted bass and treble, just being very dramatic is better for video games, but maybe not as good for a movie. Just as an example. So let's explain what happened there as I started getting used to the sound effects. This happens as you start to get used what you're training your, your brain and your hand, all the hand-eye coordination, everything, muscle control, mouse control, is when you heard the target was closer either to the right or left, and you will have to turn up your audio to be able to really tell the difference here, is it has a bit higher of a ping, and whenever it's further away, it has a bit more bass to it. That's how I decipher it. That's how I know what target's hitting me. I'm going to do this one again. And I'm going to talk through it best I can as you're aiming, which is it's not the easiest thing in the world, believe it or not. I challenge you to try having a conversation when you're trying to hear it, and I'll try to let you know if I get it right or wrong. Two away. Right. Two away. This one was close. Left. Two away to the left. One away to the left. One away to the right. Two away to the left. Two away to the right. One to the left. One to the right. Two to the right, one to the left, one to the right. This is hard to talk to, actually, believe it or not. I didn't wasn't listening as well to that one, I sorry. But you get the point. One to the left. I didn't hear that one. There we go. One to the left. It's to the right. Two to the to the left. To the left. Yeah. There we go. We're back on track with the audio kind of shows you how important game sound is, doesn't it? 
I would literally lift my headset for a second there to get an itch, and then I completely am like lost in where I'm at. That one was not very good, but we were trying to talk through it, and it's a lot more challenging than you realize. <laughs> it's like trying to read a book out loud, but at one point, I even had an itch. I know you can't see me, but you lift your headset for just a second. It's why when we play competitive games of how important this stuff is and how much of a difference it can make, even your headset and audio just to be able to decipher where an enemy is at if you heard a shot to be able to flick to that general direction and understand the difference in the audio it makes such a big difference because... I can flick back and forth at, the, at a pretty fast pace, but I'm definitely going to slow down if I have other things going on where I have to calm and say, this person is low, he's over by heaven's side, and, you know, Valorant comms, or he's cracked, he's super low, Octane just used his jump pad to get away, or you're trying to calm in Rainbow Six Siege, all of those things add up. They really, really do, and it's why you do these type of exercises. They're very unique to aim but I think they're really cool. Okay, let's go to the main screen, and let us do detection shot this one's very diff this one's pretty challenging but this will teach you to really calibrate your monitor it's like finding waldo and trying to aim as fast as possible to it there are games that have uh, that are very difficult when it comes to visibility and if the game is extremely difficult visibility wise and perhaps you need to change your your color monitor or the color calibration anything that kind of changed it up that's why benq has certain things like asus alienware it doesn't matter really the brand I'm just kind of throwing them out there giving examples but you would have to find the target, and if it's gray to gray, seeing where the target is at. I don't even see it here at the start. I've done that. There we go. And once you kind of get into a groove and your eyes settle in on it, trust me, you start to see it. I guarantee you guys probably don't see these at the start either. But once your, guy, once your eyes adjust, it's like adjusting to the dark. Once you see it enough, you know what to look for. Like at first when I was looking at this, I had no idea what I was looking at. There it is but your eyes will adjust and see the target. So if you're trying to hit something really far away, I got this question a lot in Battlefield way back when. I didn't see that when I was trying to tell a story. Way back when we're, when I was playing Battlefield and you would try to see, how did you see that guy a mile away? How did you see his head? Well, over time, you, one, you start to predict where enemies are at. And I can't find where's Waldo at the moment. It's kind of embarrassing. But then again, I'm trying to tell you a story of how Battlefield works. The visibility is really hard and really low. You zoom in, you start to know what a head, head looks like. But this will teach you what that is. It takes some concentration. You shouldn't really talk when you're doing this. Don't do what I do. Do as they say, not as I do. So that uh, scenario is a bit of a, a struggle. But really fun. I really enjoy that one. It, it it just reminds me of the Battlefield days. It really does of trying to hit things and you can barely see them in the shrubbery. Specifically when it comes to like Battlefield 5, but I really enjoyed it for Battlefield 4, but your eyes really adjust to it. And after doing that for like an hour or two, you'll just start to pop off in your overall score. And I know that detection to break top 100, I believe, is around 40,000. We had 32,000 there. So, I mean, if we played this, a, you know, a couple more times, it would easily really pop off. And let's say you're struggling. Don't worry, you'll get there. Just kind of stick with it. This one, it, I could be kind of avoiding it. I'm not very good at it. I was doing it earlier. I don't know why. I, I, I love the... It's, it's over here in custom. I did this one a whole lot. I think it was Decision Shot Ultimate. I did this one a whole lot. But I feel like this one takes it to a whole nother level because all the colors are the same. Now, I understand, listen, you, you know, if you, you have a situation perhaps where you might be colorblind, it's understandable. You, you know, do your best to kind of calibrate. Um, and if it's a weak spot, then just know it's a weak spot and just counteract it with, with as many other aspects of aim as humanly possible. Because even with, with these colors, they're so similar. You try to see what's different. So we take a look at the colors. What changed? One on the bottom left. So what colors changed? I think it was the left one, yeah. And it gets harder as you keep doing it. You have to memorize it. I think it was one on the bottom right. Nope. Okay. And it kind of reverts back as... The colors that are more prominent are the ones that I'm always able to, to memorize, so that one's easy. 